Greetings. What we've got here is a pair of Netgear FS752TS 52 port network switches. 48 of the ports are fast Ethernet 10 or 100 and we've got four ports here plus a pair of SFP ports which are gigabit or can be used for stacking. The, the, you can use a, one pair of ports for stacking with another switch to so treat it as one big switch. And if you switch the stacking ports over to here, you can either use these or the small form factor pluggable modules which go in there, such as fiber modules. You can see the top one is plugged in, but it's completely dead. The bottom one is plugged in and you can see it's running. If I turn it off and back on again, Sometimes it'll start up like it is here, other times it just starts up like that one. There's nothing at all. And if you've got a newer one of these, then you don't have to worry because Netgear put these bonkers warranties on them. I think if you buy one now, the warranty will expire in something like 2040. These ones weren't. These were bought in 2006 and the warranties then only ran for three years. So, let's say you're an IT technician for a school or something like that and you need to salvage this or you'd rather salvage this rather than just throw it in the bin. If you can coax your boss to let you, you can change the power supply out from this. Let's see how it's done. First of all, we've got four screws holding in the rack rails. with another four on the other side. Next, we have three screws. One here, here, and here. And the same again on the other side. So there's six screws there we need to take out all together, which are much smaller than the rack mount screws. Finally, there are two more screws, one here and one here which remove the front and let the, the lid slide off. Turn it over a bit more carefully than that and the, and the lids will come away. Turn it over like I did and they'll just fall. So before we carry on with the repair, let's take a quick look inside what we've got. Obviously we've got the switch mode power supply, which I'm not going to touch. I'll come back to that in a second. We've got the DC output here, which is 5 volts. Obviously we've got 3 red ones and 3 black ones here. That comes to this DC to DC converter board. And then below that we've got the main switch board. With these switching chips in charge of the main 48 ports and presumably these four for the gigabit ports and over here then we've got the flash and a little bit of glue logic and some other chips as well hidden away with heat sinks and an 88E6218 chip there as well for those who are interested. Now I said I wasn't going to touch this I am going to remove it but I don't want to actually handle the power supply for the simple reason that what I've found in the past with switchboard power supplies yes they'll hold charge for a short while after you power them off but if you've got a faulty one you may find that there's nothing around to discharge that capacitor and it can hold its charge for a lot longer so I'm going to undo the screws on it without actually touching the thing. Obviously if you've got rubber gloves you can use them instead. And there may not be any charge in this power supply at all. But I don't want to use my fingers to find out. So there we go. Need to lift it out now. Insulated pliers, grab it with the heatsink. sink. 
and she's out. And the screws have stayed behind. To fish out. And let's take a closer look at this power supply. There we go. This is a Delta Electronics ADP40VP. Obviously, depending on the size of your switch, you may find you've got an ADP30, which would be the 30 watt version. I don't know if they use ADP20s, but it depends on the size of the switch. Um, you may find that different brands will use different models as well, but you'll also you'll also find that not just Netgear will use these power supplies. You may find an ADP40 in a Dell Power Connect switch or an Allied Telesyn switch or you know many of the other brands of, of rack mount switches. So this repair tutorial is it'll hold true for that. It'll hold true not just for the FS752TS. I was originally alerted to this being able to replace the power supplies from a blog which I'll put a link to in the video comments and he was repairing a JGS 516 which is a 16 port gigabit version of this rack mount switch. Anyway, so I need a replacement for this and the good thing is I don't have to replace it with another ADP40. What I can use is anything which has the same output voltage and output current so in this case 5 volts at 8 amps, or 5 volts at at least 8 amps, something with the same input voltage range, this is 100 to 240 volts, and most importantly of all, something with the same size, it's got to have the same dimensions, give or take, say, you know, a mil or two, so it'll actually fit on the same holes. Now, where am I going to find one of those? Right here. An Artisan NLP40-7605J. It's a direct replacement for that power supply. Same width and depth and height and voltage rating and voltage output is 5 volts at 8 amps. It's a perfect replacement. Even the pins are the same. The connections are the same. The pin outs are the same. Interestingly, this one's got a, a user replaceable fuse as well instead of the surface mount, instead of the soldered down job on the other one. So, there's the replacement power supply. Where can you get them? Well, RS do them, Mouser Electronics do them, Farnell do them, although their sister site CPC don't do them. It seems any of the big global electronics suppliers will do this particular power supply. You may find other supplies which are similar. I've seen uh, an Aztec one which has exactly the same voltage and current rating but it's slightly longer so it's not going to be any good in this one. This is a perfect replacement and in fact I replaced two of these last year and they're right as rain as well. So. they do seem to last. So to mount that back in, that just goes in, lines up, you can see it's fitting perfectly over the existing screw holes. These screws can go back in. Power connection can go back on, as can the output connection, making sure you got it the right way around. It's got this edge here, like on the older power supply connectors, which goes like, like that. Make sure you've got all the pins lined up, there's no pins sticking out either side. And she's good to go. Just put the lid on, you can see it's got these fork bits here. 
they go under there so the lid goes down like that then along like that and looking at and looking at it now it may not have even been necessary to remove the side screws at the front because I think let's just try it if that is in place on the front the front will still yes there we go it'll still slide off so ignore what I said about the screws at the side there if you've already taken them out well you should have watched the video all the way through first shouldn't you that goes back like that all the screws go back in, so two at the bottom, two or three on either side, and the rack is. There's the switch, plug it in, and you can see she's starting up fine. If you're wondering, yeah, that's the one that worked already before, yes, it is the one that worked already before. This one didn't though. And just to illustrate what I was saying with this power supply, this heatsink is actually connected to one of the outputs. This heatsink is connected to the negative side of the electrolytic cap. Now on this one, there's also a resistor actually across it, so it does discharge quite quickly. But if if something had caused it to fail and blow that resistor out as well, there's nothing to cause to discharge that cap. So it'll just sit there waiting to bite. So, two switches repaired. Cost of repair, 40 quid for each power supply, including VAT. Cost of one of these switches new, 330 pounds from dabs.com, again, including VAT. So quite a nice little saving. And means that these Seven-year-old switches will live to fight another day and will carry on running for years to come. I hope you find this useful. Check out the links in the description. Check out the blog. If you find this video useful, don't just thank me in the comments. Go over to that blog and thank him as well because without that blog, this video wouldn't exist. Thank you for watching. One last thing. Apparently you can repair these sometimes by replacing that capacitor there, C3, which is rated 25 volts, 47 microfarads. But as you can see, if I compare with this one, I think the 400 volt cap is what's failing on this. And if you look at the board, it's got a bit of discoloration on there indicating that it's it's been getting a bit warm so the safest bet you know for reliability and everything is to just bin the power supply and buy a new one like I said they're only they're only about 40 pounds and you save yourself a couple of hundred pounds on the cost of a new switch it's entirely up to you